Right, thank you. Um, we're now with uh, Information Technology Services, ITS, and Keith, if you could introduce yourself and your colleagues and then make a, a brief presentation as to how things have gone for the past year and what the budget looks like for you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the opportunity. I do want to recognize those here with me. On my right, I have Margaret Keck, who's the Assistant Director for Communication and Infrastructure Services. My left is Mary Newton, who is our Division Manager for Strategy and Planning. Watching behind me from the audience, I have Don Clark and Lori Smiley. And in addition, uh, the Metro 3 technical staff who are broadcasting this event for us and making sure the public can see and hear uh, what we are saying are Michael Rear, Chris Singleton, Terry Hirsch, David Haney, and Cass George. So we appreciate all of and them for being here. And we appreciate them. 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 They do an exceptional job. That's right. Their favorite week of the year, <laughs> Absolutely. Every week is their favorite week. In 2012, information technology is clearly a key enabler of the services that our citizens demand. And as such, the ITS department takes tremendous pride in providing service to virtually all of the nearly 50 plus metro departments and agencies. ITS has had a great fiscal year 12, and there are a few achievements that stand out for us. First, ITS continues to play a major role in Metro's construction projects by working hand-in-hand -hand with the Department of General Services to provide networking and telecommunications infrastructure, including at Myatt Drive, at all new and renovated fire and police stations, Metro's new libraries, and for the first time with Metro's new charter schools. We look forward to continuing this role. With regard to Metro's Information Security Initiative, over the last year we have developed, released, and implemented 10 major information security policies based on international standards. We will continue this work collaboratively with Metro departments to produce additional required security policies in the coming year. Third, we were happy to have Metro's IT accomplishments acknowledged by the Center for Digital Government as Metro Nashville ranked third in the National Digital Cities Competition for cities over 250,000 residents, alongside cities such as Seattle and Honolulu. In the coming year, we anticipate a continued focus on construction projects, information security, and the core IT infrastructure work that is our bread and butter but also on innovative new projects such as a public safety mesh network covering the downtown area to facilitate wireless communication and additional police surveillance, as well as the first major overhaul of Nashville.gov in over five years to make it more user-friendly for constituents and metro departments alike. Turning now to ITS's operating budget scenario. I'll discuss our operating budget in two sections as there are two accounting funds that make up ITS's financials. The 2% requested reduction amounts to just under $270,000 for ITS special fund and $33,000 for ITS general fund, which includes Metro 3 and our newly integrated business solutions area. As the ITS team and I approached the proposals, we focused on our ITS strategic priorities. First, maintain a reliable core infrastructure. Second, ensure recoverability of data and services. Third, ensure data integrity and security. Fourth, reduce costs. And fifth, improve, customers, improve services to customers. We use the following process to get there. We, by examining every service offering provided by ITS to our departmental customers, we looked at the current level of services that they require, and we examined every expense of the department and how that expense contributes to our strategic priorities. With that information, we prioritized each and every opportunity for savings. Our proposal to you is as follows for the ITS special fund first. Thanks to a number of changes in our expenses in the coming year, we will not need to offer any positions for FY13 in reaching our goal of a $270,000 cut. In the ITS Special Fund, we have been able to affect cuts to various expenses that are no longer required. This includes reductions after replacing our aging AS400 system and those associated with upgrading's Metro procurement application. The one critical item that is being produced, proposed as a cut is out of our consulting services by an additional $29,000 to a total of $54,000 per year. In the past, these funds have been used to fund temporary IT contract staff with highly specialized expertise in order to help resolve critical issues. 
Moving on in the budget uh, proposal, we have also examined opportunities for non-discretionary and discretionary very high impact improvements. In this context, non-discretionary budget items are contract obligations, including a variety of hardware maintenance and software support increases. It is important for me to note that these are not ITS-only systems. These expenses, non-discretionary expenses, relate directly to systems that are used as infrastructure components for all metro departments, and neglecting to fund them could result in interruption or loss of service for critical systems across the government. These contractual con obligations continue to rise per contract and will amount to an increase of $44,000 for fiscal year 13. The one final operating budget of note, it, item of note, is the difference between our request for revenue and expense funds. The bulk of ITS is accounted for by an internal service fund. As a consequence, ITS has and maintains a reserve fund that per general accepted accounting principles should amount to 60 to 90 days of operating capital. Last year, this reserve fund had ex excess funds available, so with finance approval, we reduced our fiscal year 12 budget request for revenue and paid for $1.6 million of revenue from that reserve fund. This lowered the reserve to the expected 60 to 90 day level as an appropriate use of these funds with the benefit last year of lowering departmental billings across the board. Since these funds were removed from revenue last year, as the funds were taken from the reserve fund, this year we asked that they be restored. This is not an improvement that will bring new services to the table, but rather brings us back in line where we would have been last year had we not used reserve funds. Now I'd like to shift briefly to the ITS component within the general fund with a required 2% reduction of $33,000. Upon examination of the services provided, we propose to convert a single Metro 3 employee from a full-time position to a part-time position. The obvious downside is that it negatively impacts a Metro employee, but it could also decrease the service we are able to provide departments in filming special projects that Metro 3 does. That concludes my remarks regarding operating budget, but I'd also like to take a moment as requested to discuss ITS's capital budget submissions. Going back to the ITS strategic values that I mentioned earlier, I have categorized our requests according to those values. First, in order to maintain a reliable core IT infrastructure, we have a number of projects to replace end-of-life equipment, such as servers, network equipment, firewalls, and other items, as well as a major request to replace the network backbone that allows Metro Communicate. These critical projects amount to almost $9.5 million of that request. To ensure data security, we are requesting about $1.4 million in capital funds, as there are a number of security projects to enhance existing security and allow us to more quickly respond to security issues with fewer staff. And in the arena of improving services, we are asking for $1.4 million in capital, we're asking for these funds to complete development of Nashville.gov, the second phase, and for enhancement to self-service options for Metro employees in our financial and HR system called EBS. Finally, we have a request for Metro construction related costs that aren't directly related to projects of about $1.2 million. Our direct capital for networking and telecommunication construction projects has been included with the general services capital request in order to give you one number to look at for construction projects. In summary, ITS is a fully support organization providing infrastructure to facilitate departments doing their metro business. The effects of the reductions that we propose, we will eliminate no services to our customers or to our citizens. I'd ask that you include the non-discretionary improvements in our budgets along with the budget recovery request re resulting from the FY12 use of ITS reserve fund. 
We look forward to another year supporting Metro departments and agencies and the services that they provide to our citizens. And that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Um, first, let me mention that uh, Councilman Bedney is here with us, and we appreciate him uh, being here. Could you, Keith, talk a little bit about um, I think you and along with HR and general services have developed a basic security awareness training course. And could you talk a little bit about that, how it impacts, uh, how it affects the uh, security here in Metro? Absolutely. One of the key components of any information security uh, uh, program is generating awareness. And so the program that HR developed in coordination with us and with General Services is one that provides both basic physical security as well as information security techniques. Um, this thus far, as since we rolled it out in the fourth quarter of uh, 2011, we have had about 54% or over 6,000 Metro employees that have taken this across the government. And while I don't have specific instances of where this has saved us, frankly, awareness campaigns are, are geared toward preventing uh, uh, occurrences before they happen. We do have a lot of anecdotal uh, information of where certain aspects of the training are paying off. Uh, uh, one of the items is that was stressed in the physical security arena was not uh, letting people badge in with you. It's a, a process known as piggybacking and it could allow illicit uh, uh, individuals to come into metro buildings. And so we anecdotally hear stories all the time of people stopping others from allowing those in the buildings with them. And so it's little things, anecdotal uh, instances that I have along those lines to share with you. Okay. And you also um, started, established a metro government channel on YouTube. Yeah. Tell us about that. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we decided that in addition to providing uh, uh, the televised recorded meetings of the council, these meetings, planning, traffic, and lots of other special meetings that Metro holds to our national.gov site, we thought that the social media realm, of which YouTube is a big piece, is a fantastic avenue in order to make those videos more accessible to a wider public. So beginning uh, about a year ago, and actually starting with the beginning of fiscal year uh, uh, 12, we started putting all of Metro Council meetings onto YouTube. And since that point, we have added additional types of meetings so that anybody who's interested in planning or parking or state of metro or the, the school board and about seven other categories now can search YouTube for Metro National Government and our channel will pop up and they're all categorized on the right part of the screen. As of this morning, those videos uh, in the past year have had about 6,900 views in total, uh, which frankly, in my opinion, are 6,900 views that they wouldn't have received otherwise. Uh, not that they're not on uh, Nashville.gov, but this is an easy way for the public at large to see them and makes our government more transparent and lets more people know uh, exactly what's going on with Metro. Good, good. Um, could you, you've actually, was it during the course of this fiscal year, you moved into your new space? Actually, we've been there about a year and a half. A year and a half now? now? Yep. And how's that going? I mean, it's... That, that building is a treat to be in. Uh, this is the Fulton Complex. And this is the Howard Office Building. Yeah. So having a, a department who had come from yeah. the basement of the old Howard Building and the attendant woes uh, 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 attending there too, uh, to a rental place out in uh, Metro Center to a, a beautiful green uh, covered parking, uh, a well air conditioned uh, new equipment building. It has been a, 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 a true treat to, to be housed in that building. It's gone extremely well. General Services, I have to give them a lot of credit. Uh, they spent a tremendous amount of time working on us with security as we maintain public safety information within our department. They've done a, a tremendous job of securing the building and making it a, a comfortable and secure place for us. Good, good. And let me, you are looking at, or are you considering looking at, um, I guess some other governments have established um, 
AM radio stations to keep um, pu the public informed? Are you looking at that, or what are you, what are you finding out about that? What, what we've seen that in times of, of emergency, we as a, a metro government have a number of ways to communicate with constituents currently. We have Nashville.gov, we have uh, Metro 3 television, we have our access to the news media, but what a number of cities around the country are doing is they are providing AM transmitters uh, on metro or on government buildings that are then only activated in a test mode or when there is actually some sort of uh, emergency uh, with the idea that you may not have cell phone, you may not have TV, you may not have internet, but as long as you can turn your car on um, or have a, a, trans, a portable radio, you can get AM signals. So uh, 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 San Marcos, California is one example of a city that we have looked at that for about $12,000, now I don't know how big San Marcos, California is, but for about $12,000 they stuck a, an antenna on top of one of the roofs of their buildings and are able to, to broadcast that in times of emergency. So it is something that has been put out there for consideration. We've not yet had a formal conversation with your Office of Emergency Management or others at this point, but it is certainly an idea on the table. You wouldn't be hiring DJs or anything like that? Well, rich. it depends on the direction you want to take it. So. Probably. Oh, rich may be interested. After this year, I might be interested in that. <laughs> hey, just a general, just an observation. I'm not really sure I know what the answer I'm looking for is, but um, just generally speaking, what I'm seeing in, 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 from a number of departments and obviously focused in yours is just the, just the overall increasing cost of IT services, just the software, the contractual obligations and things of that nature. And, and um, you know, I'm a little concerned about the lack of, um, um, I don't know what to write, conformity to w what's going on. You know, I, you know, we, you know, finance had a IT function and we sort of now have rolled that into, into, into IT and I think that's gone fairly well and I don't see any, I've not heard any complaints from my staff on dim diminution of services, we're getting what we need and all that. And I just think as, um, you know, it's more of an observation, more than even a comment if you want to, but that there's, you know, police have needs, sheriff has needs, uh, codes department has a system. Uh, and, and in terms of how we're going to prioritize these, I mean, we could spend all of our capital dollars on, on sort of requested, uh, a little bit of an exaggeration, but on requested soft grade, software upgrades and systems and all that. And I think just generally as a government, we're going to have to figure out a system to control these costs and make sure we're prioritizing and we're getting the biggest <coughs> For it. I, I, just a statement I'm making. I don't know if you have any thoughts on it or. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and there are models that are in play in lots of other government, governments around the country, around governance. It's just a matter of, of willingness of the administration and others to come together and, and determine whether that's a direction uh, that, that you guys would like to go. I'm prepared to work with you and whomever else on that should, uh, uh, should we choose to go down that path. I'd be happy to do so. Okay. Greg? Chief, update us on the security function and how that's going besides the video, but in a broader kind of government-wide perspective. The uh, awareness, again, is only one small piece of it. Right. Uh, uh, we have, we continue the three-year-long, very collaborative initiative around developing policies collaboratively. Uh, uh, using uh, ISO standards and National Institutes of Standards and Technology uh, guidance, uh, but that are developed toward the Metro model and what works for us. We're establishing baselines, we are putting the policies out, and we're also helping departments develop plans around implementation. Um, Again, we have 10 policies in place of probably about 20 that we will end up at the end of the day. We have of those ISO standards that we're looking to cover, we've addressed about 50% of them at this point. So we are well on our way to, to having a comprehensive uh, 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 plan in place. Uh, we uh, somewhat 
took a hit to the program within the past couple of weeks as our chief information security officer has stepped down to take another opportunity. So we will be looking at the opportunities to fill that position. Uh, Greg Schaefer did a good job of kind of marshalling efforts that were led by a number of people in years past. He served for about 15 months. Um, we don't anticipate the program stopping while we're in an interim period, however. We'll continue moving on. You'll continue to see progress, um, and, and we certainly continue the program. Good. All right. And we put together um, know, a couple of years ago now probably the, the group on the executive order to help with security issues, a pretty good Yes. Of individuals in the private sector, how is that going? Uh, the, the Information Security I, uh, Advisory Board, or ISAB, was established about four years ago. It's seven top of their game chief information security officers from various uh, private and uh, the state's chief information security officer who meet once a quarter. They provide us not only with advice and guidance, but actually directed input as part of our initiative around uh, developing policies and plans. Uh, they've all been there and done that when it comes to developing and implementing uh, um, policies and programs, and they have been an enormous help uh, uh, to us. We recently went through kind of the roll off of the first two year crowd and we brought a new crowd in and they have been uh, a, an excellent resource for not only ITS department but other metro departments and agencies as well. Good, good. All right, well thank you and thank you for um, all your hard work and you know, you're obviously a key department and um, I think you're doing a great job and we're, we're thankful for that. Well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.